I was going to introduce a bill in January, a bipartisan bill, a bicameral bill that orders the Department of Defense to research every black American, Indian American, Jewish American that served in World War I, and if they didn't receive their decorations for honor, uh, they will receive them when this bill becomes law. And I'm proud to say, last week, in the National Defense Authorization Act that will pass the House and Senate, President Trump will sign it into law in the next few days, that my language uh, demanding that uh, uh, correction of a uh, misdeed will be prepared for <laughs> And I really thank the researchers at the University of Arkansas Little Rock that brought this to my attention. And on Memorial Day, I went out to Arlington uh, Cemetery and uh, saluted another great American who also, uh, uh, President Obama and President Clinton, awarded uh, the Medal of Honor to for his bravery under the same circumstances uh, just uh, less than 20 years ago. So 80 years after that service was rendered. So that's an important statement that we complete unfinished business, we right wrongs, uh, we step up and just take, take it like it comes. So I want to thank Peter Roosevelt for his leadership uh, during that period. I want to, I want to say that uh, we're riding a wrong from World War I on the anniversary of World War I. I think that's good. And you can flash forward a few years and you think about uh, what we all live with here at Central High School. And I was proud that uh, President Trump signed into law by a bill that expands the National Historic Site here at Little Rock Central High School. Uh, and it's an important place on that civil rights trail in America for visitors from all over this country that want to learn about what happened in the 1950s and 1960s in the United States as we corrected the wrong of the Jim Crow South. Uh, and we were a stop in that major effort who was responsible for making sure that happened? The U.S. Supreme Court, with appointees from President Dwight Eisenhower, Republican, who inserted federal troops here to make sure that the Democratic governor properly complied with Brown versus Board of Education. Dwight Eisenhower, Republican President of the United States. And then a little touch of irony that some of us know is that our former governor, Frank White, long deceased now, sadly, our good friend, Frank White, was a young airman uh, and brought those troops from Fort Campbell, Kentucky, to Little Rock, Arkansas. He was a pilot on that Air Force train, and little did he know uh, in 1980 he'd be elected governor of Arkansas as a Republican. So I invite you, as Pastor has said, do your own homework. But there is uh, a party that for a hundred, uh, over, well over 150 years, uh, founded by Abraham Lincoln, has espoused liberty, support for the Bill of Rights, supported equal rights, supported opportunity for all supported uh, that thing that we treasure the most in American society, uh, pursuit of happiness. We were all promised in July 1776, but we didn't all get it. But we've got it now. So it's not about anything except what we're going to do as individuals, to live it, pursue it, enjoy it, share it, and then carry it on and lay that foundation for those that come behind us. And a place to do that, in my view, is education, which is why I spend so much time focused on better education for all of our children. Because George W. Bush was right uh, when he said that uh, bad schools, no expectation that they should be better that we should be satisfied with low expectations. He said low expectations are the soft bigotry of our society. He's right. 
So I support charter schools. So I support workforce education in every one of our high schools. It's why I think we should have high standards. It's why I think teachers should be held to high standards. I think parents should be held to high standards. I think we should demand the best out of our families. If you have a family that's not uh, that's struggling, maybe you can be the best. Maybe you can set that example. And so it's a, a pleasure for me to work with Philander Smith, with Arkansas Baptist College, with Shorter here, because they are out every day fighting to offer opportunity to first-time goers for higher education and deliver that and deliver that in the right way. When I was a banker here, long before I was in Congress, Dr. Fitz Hill, my cousin, uh, and I teamed up on how do we make Arkansas Baptist the best it can be. And Fitz led that school for 10 years. And we continue every year to work to make our HBCUs uh, the best that they can be. Just like we do UA Little Rock, just like we do UCA, just like we do the University of Arkansas at Fayetteville. We want our schools to have the best opportunities and offer the best they can for our students. And so I'm on the co-chair of the Historically Black College and University uh, Caucus in Congress with Alma Adams uh, from North Carolina, Bradley Byrne from Alabama. And we work every day to make sure that our HBCUs have the resources they need to carry out that mission, make sure our students who attend those schools have the resources they need. And it's why I invited Dr. Michael Lomax, who is president of the United Negro College Fund, here just a few weeks ago to have a summit with the philanthropic community here, meaning people who give money, the nonprofit community of the state of Arkansas, of the city of Little Rock, uh, our employers, the Chamber of Commerce, we wanted them all to be on campus and talk about strategies to make sure that we are making sure those schools are strong and strong uh, players in higher education and that those students that graduate from our HBCUs have great uh, job potential and internship uh, potential here as well. And Mike Lomax gave a really inspiring talk but it was terrific also to have Governor Jason Hutchinson there who turned right around and committed $3 million in addition to what we've gotten done successfully with the federal government to benefit our HBCUs in this state. So uh, hats off to Jason. So it's an honor for me to serve uh, all of you in Congress. I consider it an honor. Uh, and I'm always looking for ways to make every community in this city of ours, this district of ours, be successful. And that's what my mission is, whether it's uh, the idea of opportunity zones, which I'm working on with Philander Smith, on bringing uh, business around the Philander Smith campus using President Trump's opportunity zones, which remove taxation if you invest in one of these key opportunity zones. And that's something that Governor Hutchison and the President believe strongly in. We have about 80 of those in Arkansas. We have 14 here in the 2nd Congressional District. So we're working on that to bring jobs and opportunity into uh, areas that need it and need it badly. Uh, so anything that you see that you think I can do to do a uh, better job for our district, I hope you'll invite me to do that. You can always reach out to me by emailing me at hill.house.gov. And with that, I'm going to propose a few questions for our young folks to see how well they're listening. <laughs>